Drumfest Apollo 2017, George Collias. Uh, welcome to Beated.tv, the drummer's website. Great to be here. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. Of course. And we are, we are talking to you right after the finals of the Young Drum Hero contest. Yeah. So, uh, of course, we don't know the, the results yet. You know them, probably. We don't want you to review them, but we certainly would like you to comment on what you saw yesterday and today. Um, I was um, impressed and inspired. Really inspired. I'm not saying it, you know, to support the contest, but, you know, um, watching, like, young drummers going up there and killing it you know and you know performing the the best they, they can and I know the stress I know they don't use their drum sets um, it's a big deal it's a big deal and I you know hats off to everybody who, uh, who was a part of it I was very impressed from especially from some drummers which is normal um, the 10 year old guy mm -hmm. yes. insane insane yeah I was um, you know, I hope uh, to meet him later or something and, uh, you know, give him a little bit extra push, like, uh, you know, to his parents to help him because I think, you know, you're about to witness uh, uh, a great drummer in a few years with him um, and many other, so. many other people, so. yeah. yeah. Uh, the two ladies, mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and, you know, a few more guys, the variety of styles. I loved how um, some of them cover different styles as well. So, you know, they play like a pop tune and then a jazz tune or, you know, uh, very impressed, inspired, like I said. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yesterday <coughs> you conducted a clinic. Yes. So what are your impressions from that? I had a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. You know, sometimes uh, you go up there and you do your job. And uh, for me, it has, always has to be fun. And uh, it almost always, is fun, but yesterday was a little bit extra fun, um, just because you know I had a warm welcome and a great day, and like I said, I, I got so the room inspired. Was full, which was nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like I said, it, I I got so inspired that just I was looking forward to play, you know, watching drummers playing all day, and um, unfortunately I didn't spend the time I wanted, you know, setting up the kit, so I had some minor difficulties, but uh, I had great fun. I loved it. is the most important thing you want to convey to those who come? Um, the gist of it. I want, I want to show people that uh, we're not only about speed, for, for what I do. It's not only about speed. It is fast, aggressive music, but it's a lot of groove, a lot of, you know, um, you know great drumming in there, you know, and uh, it's, it's the music that drives uh, the drummer as well. So we call it extreme death metal, but to me it's like a it's extreme drumming. Uh, it's a form of drumming that uh, everybody should get involved, in my opinion. And uh, I also try to motivate everybody to get involved in different styles. Like uh, the metal guys play some jazz, you know, some funk and all this stuff. But also the funk and jazz drummers play some metal. Um, you kind of see the first version. I see many um, metal drummers you know, trying to get involved in different styles, but not so much the opposite. So I want to break this uh, barrier and, you know, it's bring people to our music. Mm -hmm. And like I said many times, um, speed will always be mainstream. So there are, there are people like, yeah, I like to groove, but I do, you know, I'm not the big fan of speed. I'm like, 
name your favorite drummers. And you know, they name their favorite drummers but everybody Rich, super for fast. For example, he exactly. was the extreme exactly. guy at, you know, at yes. his, uh, of his time, right? Exactly, yeah. For me, Buddy Rich is uh, he's doing what you know, some extreme metal drummers, you know, were doing. Like it's super intense, super fast, aggressive. Uh, of course, you know, some low dynamics as well, but there is a lot of aggression, uh, intensity, you know, in, uh, in his music. Tony Williams as well, you know, all these greats. So, you know, like I said, drumming is one thing for me. And um, I try to motivate people and myself to play different styles and just, you know, become a, a great drummer. That's it. And have fun. I mean, it's, it's great fun to play different styles anyways. What I liked about yesterday <laughs> during your clinic, also that is, was the fact that there weren't only the extreme metal fans that you extremely know because of the image, right? Yeah. There were kids, there yep. were, you know, older guys, there were like 60 year olds, yep. and they were all into what you were doing, you know? So it's beautiful. that's very, you know, yep. I think brings hope to also exactly. like what you said, you know, yep. like different genres and, and <coughs> trying to blend them in, into one's playing, yes. right? Yes, I mean, yeah, me and Dari, you know, we involved with uh, two big extreme metal bands and we toured the world with them, you know, so we, you know, this is why, why we're well known. Uh, but I mean, you can tell we're not talking about this specific style only, although I try to introduce it a little bit more smooth and this is why I'm doing clinics. Um, I'm doing clinics because I really love the instrument, I really love drums. Um, I. I can't get enough and I try to um, show to people that you know this is not what you hear like this machine gun you know style well sometimes it has to be like that you know but in um, in the big picture is like it is drumming it's aggressive it's fast it's a form of drumming that I do while I'm doing other things as well in and drumming. it's also played by a human being which is very important yeah of course right? of course it's we get, programmed you know? we get a lot of blame about uh, you know like uh, the, the trigger thing and you know it's only about speed and stuff and to be honest it's our fault because I see many young kids you know on YouTube be like oh yeah yeah 300 BPM 260 BPM like you know the, the word BPM is stuck in their head um, and when I try to explain them that it's not about speed I'm not trying to tell them don't play fast because for me it's it's one of the most things to play fast. Um, that's what I do since I was uh, really young. But um, yeah, don't get you know stuck with this part only. It's music, and you should play fast if the music calls for it. It's it's not a um, it's not a contest. You know, like we we said it many times. Although I support speed, I try to make them a little bit more um, you know flexible with other styles as well. Um, since you know it, it was a it was a clinic, and uh, one of the uh, things that you do during your clinics or any drummer does is also showcase the gear. Yeah. So let's talk about your gear. Uh, it is uh, and has been for quite some time. Pell drums, right? Yes. Uh, pretty much forever. Yeah. To be honest, I started with. Uh, what model is it now? Uh, that was a reference pure. Yeah. Uh, and I own the exact same model back home. Uh, right now, <clears throat> when I'm not using it as a big drum set, I use it as a fusion kit. So Pearl sent me an extra kick, 20 by 18, and uh, I use 10, 12, 14, 16. Um, another snare from another line, which is uh, the Masters Premium Legend. It's, for me, the Reference Pure is one of the greatest drum sets ever, like one of the most successful uh, recipes. And I like the Reference as well, but this is a little bit more open, a little bit more um, it's got a little bit more soul in it, you know, uh, very, you know, depending on the heads you're using and the tuning, you know, it's, um, you can play like many, many different styles, you know, uh, my masterworks, for example, when I have, uh, what I have in my studio as a main big drum set, you know, it's really thick shells, uh, it's more metal. So it's not really, you know, it's, it's made actually designed by me, you know, the wood and everything, you know, masterworks is custom. So I made it specifically, you know, for this style. But the pures is uh, it's it's pure fun. They should call it pure fun. <laughs> I love the kit. I love the kit. Okay. I don't have the same color though. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, yeah. The natural finish. Yes. Yeah. I have a black kit. What a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 
uh, snares, right? Yeah. This is a slightly more individual thing. I mean, you can have lots of them and lots of drummers collect, yeah. you know, and have tons of yeah. gear and stuff. So, from Pearl, it's also reference, right? You, you like that one? Um, Are there any other snares you prefer or like or sometimes like to, to play? Uh, from Pearl, you mean? Yeah. I only play Pearl. Yeah. Seriously, I don't have any other brand. Um, my Masterworks is a great metal snare, a great one. And uh, although it, it sounds a little bit weird, like you, you never think it's you know the, the best snare when you're playing it, uh, when you record, it's absolutely you know insane. So I pretty much always record with that when it comes to metal. Um, the Reference Fury is, uh, like I said, for any style. The Master Premium Legend is. Um, it's really thin shells and it's it's a little bit more open, you know, for uh, like um, jazz, for example, uh, or funk. Uh, the main reference, the 20 ply, have you seen this now? 20 plies. It's yeah, like that shell. thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when I do some rock music or stuff, you know, I use that. So I got a variety of snares. I'm not a collector. I don't, you know, it's not my thing. But I do have like seven, eight snares which I use for different uh, recordings because um, I do a lot of sessions, you know, for other bands. And uh, one of the, one of the greatest things when I have a session is like, you know, pick up the gear. Especially now with my new studio, I got more room and you know I'm more flexible to use you know a different drum set, different setups, you know. So the snare is always like, uh, oh, I'm gonna use this one, I'm gonna use this one, maybe muffle it a little bit, maybe a little bit more open, you know. And uh, yeah, I got a few snares to use for uh, recordings. Skins. Um, again, a variety. Um, like, uh, for example, I can go with um, like a G1, for example. You know, now on my uh, Reference Pure kit, I have the G1s uh, coated. So they're uh, singing a little bit more, you know. Um, if, uh, if I was teaching on that kit, which actually I do, but just a little bit, uh, I would use G2. Call it. So you still get the same thing, but you know they the same vibe, but they, they last way longer. Um, my main on our main setup, I play G2 clears, uh, great for uh, metal music or rock, and uh, HD dry on the snares. It's a little bit more controlled sound, you know. Uh, what else? EQ twos on the kicks, which is double ply, but um, again, you know, a little bit more open, you know, for the. For the kick, I love the open sound of the kick, like a boom, you know, I don't like the, you know, the choked kick drums. So yeah, pretty much that's it, but um, I also have other models which I'm, I'm testing and, you know, depending on the recording. Uh, recently I got the UV-1, I don't know if you know this, uh, you know, new drum head. Um, they're supposed to last forever. This is like a, I, actually I saw a used drum head for like, five six months used and look brand new so it's for, even for me it's hard to believe you know uh, so yeah that's you know some testing you know yeah The sticks I'm using is, um, you know, they're from Vicfirth. I, to be honest, I play Vicfirth when I, you know, since I first started. You know, so I, I've been with Vicfirth forever, but uh, officially 13 years ago. So I, I used to play the five A's, then I switched to 55 A's because you know they're a little bit heavier, you know, but still uh, flexible if you want to play like super fast. And um, then I got, you know, like five years ago, I got uh, the owner, you know for Vicfer to make my own signature stick, which they sell on the market, which is kind of based on the 55A with a different uh, tip. We use a barrel tip, and that's because, you know, I play like really heavy cymbals, 
so you need something that lasts a little bit longer you know than um, the teardrop that they use for uh, 55 days and uh, the topper is also a little bit uh, thicker so it gives you a little bit more weight on the on the front you know uh, it's a great stick to play pretty much everything for me like it's it's very flexible to play um, different styles as well so it's not like super heavy for metal and then you know you gotta use other sticks because i like uh, the idea to have uh, the same weight and um, you know mass like in my hands when i'm playing i don't i don't like to switch like uh, sizes so much so it's a great stick but um, you know having your signature some people think like it's made for metal and stuff no my sticks are like uh, you know i challenge anybody to use them to try them they're gonna love them yeah and symbols, of course, it's Sabian. Sabian for also for a long, long time. Um, I use what I was using today, uh, yesterday. You know, there are some sub substitutes, you know, of uh, symbols I mainly use because it's really hard to bring my symbols, you know, travel around with the symbols every time. Uh, I use uh, mainly HHX and AAX. That's my, uh, my uh, cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But again, depending on the gig, depending on you know on the on the drum set and the setup. Um, recently, I switched from uh, AX metal rides to Leopards, um, and I, I I I just got actually a pair which is uh, 22 and 20, but it's uh, pitch matched. Amazing, you know, for, for what I do, amazing symbols. Um, I got the same models in my studio, which they're a little bit they have a little bit more overtone, so. They help me a little bit more with um, sessions, you know, if the band needs a little bit more, you know, um, an open ride, you know, so with a little bit more sustain, I mean, you know. Um, I love these ride symbols. Um, I use the Legacy series, you know, uh, the Dave Wackel Legacy. I got an Artisan ride, you know, for my uh, small kit. Artisan hats, uh, Legacy crashes. Um, Pretty much, I try to use everything. Now, the last uh, two years, I use a lot of stacks, a lot. I got, uh, recently I got the XSR, the new stack, which is uh, 16 and 13, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 16 and 13, what an amazing symbol. <sighs> Blown away. Uh, I had the luck actually to make a video, you know, on the when they debuted the symbols, you know. And uh, yeah, I was like, wow, I love this one. Some uh, 12 inch uh, and 10 inch stacks as well. I use uh, 18s, the Aeros Plus and the China Kang, the HH, uh, yeah, HH. So, yeah, whatever, you know, the different uh, yeah. gigs. Right. Okay. Um, when, especially when it comes to jazz or funk or, you know, blues, those, those genres, usually uh, the uh, European or non American drummers yeah. don't really make it in America doing that kind of thing. It yeah. seems like the Americans, you know, thing. When it comes to extreme music, uh, it seems like it's the opposite, right? It's you do have, of course, you do have American drummers who play yeah. great extreme. Yeah. But there's the Polish scene is really strong, and yes. in fact, we've got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's you, you know, yeah. and there's other guys from Europe and yeah. from other countries. Why do you think? This is. Is there a, a way to explain this phenomenon? It's it's funny, and you know, I can't really explain it. And I play in a, in an American band. I mean, they could they could easily get an American drummer, you know. But we're we've been together for thirteen years, uh, from you know till now, and uh, I just I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit. Uh, you know, the Europeans were a little bit more hungry around 2000 where you know this um, uh, scene kind of explode and um, you were hearing drummers going like up to 250 bpm you know and it takes a lot of it takes a lot that's you know you you really need to love the instrument and spend a, a lot of time you know it's not easy i'm telling you it's not easy every day i play i have to go through pain um, and make it sound groovy and you know like um put like a little bit more soul so some people think it's only the hard part, which it is, of course. But there is also the musical part. You know, if you only knew what you know what's in my head while I'm when I'm playing, you know, like the sound I'm producing, and you know, I just always try to keep up with the speed. Of course, you know, it's too fast. Um, clean, uh, make it as clean as possible, you know. And also, you know, with the the band I'm playing, so a lot of crazy signatures, a lot, like elevens, sevens, you know, all the time. And the thing is, like. 
Yeah, I can play 11, I can play, you know, 21, it's okay. But at these speeds, you have to think like super fast, you know, and also make it groove. It's, it's really tough. Uh, but this is why we play together. I love challenging, you know. Right. Okay, your plans, your, you know, immediate plans. Uh, <coughs> there is a solo album coming up, right? And what's um, on Isle? Actually, right now we're writing the new Nile album, so we're composing right now. We're on this stage with uh, four songs so far and a lot of other ideas uh, on the table. Um, I'm, I push everybody back a little bit because um, I was just moving to a new studio, so that took like a three month, it was a three month transition. So everybody expects me, you know, when I go back to get some demos going. I worked some uh, ideas, but I haven't recorded something yet for uh, the pre-production. So that's the main focus. Then solo album. Yeah, I got some songs, but I'm not really focusing on that right now. I want to, I want to do the best for the new Nile album and push it. We we will try to raise the bar big time this time. So you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be very challenging, and I want to focus like 110 uh, percent there. Uh, what else? Some clinics. I got many clinics right now. So after this, I go home for two days. And then back to Europe, uh, Brussels, uh, Netherlands, Germany. Uh, then I go to Czech Republic, and uh, then I got Slovakia, Hungary, and um, that's it. I think December is the month I'm relaxing, so I'm going to try to keep December and January off, so I can focus on, on my band like 100%. And uh, then February, try to get some more clinics going. You know, yeah, I love being everywhere. <laughs> 